guys what's up it's PJ here and this is the tenth video of the series for the Java 2D platformer and I realized how stupid I am because when I was changing these parameters I thought I was changing the X and the Y of the player but really I was changing the width and the height so for now we're just gonna do X offset equals negative 200 and y offset equals negative 400 which is what we had before so if we look at our thing so far our game so far we are we have our map right here it's 4 by 4 and you know that's that's okay and all but what we want to do is we want to be able to load in our own files <laughs> so to get started on this let's create a new folder in our project and we're going to call this res. Now when we make this res, right click on it and we're going to go to build path and we're going to say use as source folder. So that way when we compile our jar file after we're done, it'll be brought with it and not just left here. So in our res folder, let's create a new other, go to other and general file. And we will call this um, map1.map okay so we can open this in whatever we want I'm actually gonna open with text editor which is built into Eclipse now the way we're gonna do this is on our file the first line is gonna be the width so we'll have four four is gonna the second line is gonna be the height and then we're gonna have four lines of four each so these will be ID numbers for the different blocks so they'll be separated by spaces 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 and 1 1 1 1 so this will basically be the same thing that we have right now but if we put zeros in it'll be different it'll be blank or I might actually change that to a negative 1 instead we'll see so to load in our files we need to create a new method let's actually delete this whole filling the blocks right now we're actually going to create a new method called load map and load map we will put down here public void load map so what this is going to do it's going to take the path this load path and it's going to load the file in so to do this we need to create a new input if I can spell it input stream we're going to call this is or is actually is <laughs> and what we need to do is set it equal to this dot get class dot get resource as stream so this is going to this resource as stream is going to take in the load path or path actually and now we have a new object of our file that we can use in a buffered reader. So we need to create a buffered reader. We'll call this br. And this is going to equal a new buffered reader, which is going to take in a new input stream reader so it can read the input stream. And then we're going to put the is in there. So now that we have this, we can read our file. So what we're going to do is actually delete this width and height thing and this width and height right here. So what we do is width equals integer dot parse int br dot read line. So this is going to read the first line. We actually need to surround this with a try catch. So surround the whole thing with a try catch um, with a numbered format exception and an IO exception and just print the stack trace so this is going to take in the line which is the first line right here and it's going to say okay this is a string so now we're going to turn it into an integer and that's we're storing it in width now we're going to do the same thing with height integer dot parse int br dot read line 
So now, you might be thinking, wouldn't it be just reading the same thing? But actually, the buffered reader, it reads the line and it knows it's already read it, so it goes down to the next line. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a new string and we're going to call this line. Actually, before that, we're going to set blocks equal to new block, height, and width. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a, um, a string called line and we'll set it equal to br.readline. So now we've got our line and that's going to be a string four space four space four space four or it's ones not fours so what we need to do is we need to split this up so we make a new array of strings called um, tokens and what we're going to do is line dot split and then this our backslash backslash s plus now this is going to split everything up by spaces now, let's see. Now we're going to create a for loop, and it's going to be int i equal to zero. i is less than. Let's see. Actually, we're going to need to put a for loop around this string tokens. We we'll do for int i equals zero, or int. We'll do int y equals zero. Y is less than height. Y plus plus. So basically, it's just going to read four lines. Um, now, in here, we'll do four int x equals zero. X is less than width. And x plus plus. So now, in here, what we want to do is we're going to go. Um, blocks y x since this is the y and this is the x equals new block and we'll do um, x times block dot block size and y times block dot block size now we actually need to go back to the blocks class or the block class and we're going to add a new field or a new um, parameter to our constructor. This will be int id, and we need a new int in here id. Now in the constructor, we'll do this dot id equals id. And for now, I'm going to surround. I'm going to do this. Um, if id does not equal zero, then we can draw a rectangle. So if we go back to the map. What we're going to do is we're going to do integer dot parse int tokens x. So now what we should have is our fully loaded map, I believe. Let's run it and see, actually. No, we need to fix something. So we can just get rid of this, this 4 and 4, and we'll just put in our build path, our load path. And what that's going to be is actually, yeah, slash map one dot map. Since this is in the build path, it's already accounted for as part of the files. So now run this. See, we have an open or the same thing as we had before. And what we can do is we can change this around. So I can put a zero here and we'll have a hole in the middle of it. No, we won't actually. Okay. Um, hmm. Well then, let's actually let's like mess around with this map. So this is the width. It's gonna, we'll make it six. One 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 one. Let's see if that extends out more. Yes, it does. Okay, so if ID does not equal zero, hmm. I wonder why it didn't not it didn't I wonder why it's still drawing it. If ID is not equal to 
can't save the map. Hmm. I'm running into all kinds of problems with this series. For some reason I can never get anything right in this. Like it works fine. And I make it and now it doesn't. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so for some reason it's taking one as the ID for everything, which is not good. Let's let's print out tokens. Well, tokens dot to string. Okay, um, <laughs> what we'll do is so tokens x. You guys get to see some live debugging. Okay, so it's taking in all all ones for some reason. Hmm. Okay, so it's going through all the Y's. It's not taking the same line over and over. Let's try changing it on here. See if that affects the top for some reason. And it affected the whole the whole line. Okay. Now that's strange. It should not be doing that. So maybe the X is not changing? Hmm. Well, I don't really know what's wrong, so I will come back and fix that in the next video, because I don't really have enough time to fix it right now, but thank you guys very much, again, for watching these videos. It really means a lot to me that you took the time to watch this, and I really hope you're learning. Please leave a comment if you have a question. I'm happy to help you out. So thank you guys. See you next time.